Olá pessoal, eu sou a Gil Evert, Vivendo Bilingue. Hoje eu trago a segunda parte da nossa entrevista com as au pairs. A Luísa, a Felicitas e a Agostina irão detalhar um pouco mais as experiências, irão falar de si mesmas e contar prós, contras, enfim. Vamos mergulhar um pouquinho mais neste um ano de experiência das meninas. A primeira parte da entrevista você pode ver neste link aqui para entender, para ter o todo dessa entrevista. Nós vamos colocar um pequeno vídeo aqui para te ensinar a acionar a legenda em português para aqueles que não querem ou que não entendem inglês na entrevista das meninas, ok? Pause o vídeo e clique nos três pontos na parte de cima, à direita do vídeo. Depois, clique em legendas, escolha a opção português do Brasil. Pause por alguns segundos e dê play novamente. As legendas devem aparecer junto com o vídeo. Eu espero que vocês gostem. Vamos ver. But now we talk a little bit about the, let's say, the logistics and everything. So, pros and contras. Because, of course, you leave your country, you live in with a family, you have little kids, sometimes older kids, and you have to be part of this family. You have to fit in. And um, how would you guys... Say a little about pros and contras. What do you say to the girls? Hey, take care about this or think about that. Tell your little experiences or what you now, when you know more than you knew before you leave your country, you would say to other girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I feel like the most contra thing, it will be like missing your family. But beside of that, it's, it's really a to you um for us you get to know and in the usa it's easier to go from a city to another one you have a domestic flights you have mm -hmm. really easy um roads to do like um road trips <laughs> i'm sorry and i think that's like the pro yeah it will be like the Oh, getting to know the country and it's really nice. but then the culture knowing more people from a lot of countries i mean i met luisa <laughs> and um but yeah i mean if you find a contra it's going to be really up to you yeah you can miss but your family is going to be there when you come back um okay yeah <laughs> oh, i go Tell a little bit your pros, your contras, your experience at the end, at the balance. So, yeah. Yeah, I will say that um, the pro will be like, yes, get, get to know all, well, <laughs> when you come here, you say, okay, I'm going to travel all over the United States and then COVID happened. Yes. Oh, okay. uh, that's unfortunate. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> if you are lucky and uh, you can like, get to know other places and get to know your city where you all live. I forgot to mention, I'm living in San Diego, California right now. Oh, right. I live in Chicago one year. Uh, so I, I extended and I changed family. So I would say like, um, yes, um, all the process will be get to know new people. I, we knew Luisa first and like have friends all over the world and then uh, make a bond, like a, a relationship with your new family and that family is gonna stay like in your heart like for the rest of your life I mean I really love my family in Chicago I miss them a lot and but I I, I felt like I had to like change mm -hmm. and have another experience like another family so when I come back I can say okay I lived two years in the United States I had two experience like completely different two relationships like good And then um, for the contours, I would say uh, the goodbyes is a little yeah. difficult. This is hard. It was, hard. yes, it was extremely difficult to say goodbye to these two <laughs> girlies. Yeah. Um, Luisa, tell a little bit pros, contras, what have you experienced in this time? Yeah, so um, I totally agree with Agus. It's hard. The, the goodbye part is very hard. Like first you say goodbye to your family at home and then you make yeah. a lot of au pair friends, not only au pair friends, but few. And then you kind of have to keep saying goodbye. But on the other hand, and that's like one of the biggest 
uh, pros overall is these people, as I said, are going to stay in your life. I now have friends in so many different parts of the world that I know I can go visit sometime, which is awesome. And I, I really love that. Um, one other con that I assumed, like that definitely people should be aware of when they do this, yeah. you are going to live at some other people's house. So it's not like you have your own place and then once you're off work, you can just do whatever. I mean, the, the idea is, and luckily for us, that works very well, that your host family gives you all your privacy and you have your own space, but still, it's like you're living in other people's house. You have, you to, have to be respectful in. of that. Yes, you, you can't just bring whoever you want at any time mm-hmm. you want. But um, in my opinion, like, that's what I signed up for. I knew that from the beginning. And um, as long as you communicate, everything can work out greatly. And um, yeah, what you get in exchange is like more family. Like my three host kids are like my siblings. And they will always be there for me and um, this kind of relationship will always know you have a second or third home somewhere and um yeah that means a lot yeah and i guess uh, because i have the experience i have all pairs in my house so i can see the other side because you guys just talk mostly about pros contrast of course there is some and first you have to fit in you have to get to know other people you have to first you get used to the new culture you have to from food till daily uh, chores, you have to do whatever. And, um, and there is one point I think I have to say here, you guys are a little older. So I guess you had a, a, already a picture what you were waiting, what do you were uh, um, expecting and what you were um, free to give. It's different when we're 18 and you leave your mothers and mother, father, sisters, you are homesick mostly, you haven't made a boyfriend. So the emotional part, you guys are much forward than the 18 year old girl that's leaving home for the first time. This is an advantage you guys have. But if we talk about young ones, 18, 19, it happens, I've heard the stories, uh, they were in Australia, they were in Singapore and they just couldn't hold, they, they could not handle it, had to come home because they were homesick, they could not adjust. So this is important to have a picture, what I am going to, to see there, what I'm all up to give for this, and what is my, my balance from giving and taking, what's, you know, and of course the financial part is very important for the families a win because it's cheaper than to have the kids in, in, in the whole day in the school, in a private school or daycare, and for you guys, it's cheaper because you have a house, you can travel, as you said, you, you have a lot of experiences for free, let's say that. Of course, you work a lot. There is also um, a lot of controversy. A lot of people say, oh, au pair, they are explorer, they are like slaves, they are working for nothing. It happens too that you have a bad family, that you have a bad experience. <laughs> It happens too, but mostly everything is kind of balanced. And you have a chance to change the family if you don't adjust it to one. That's a lot of things you can do to save this year and use it very uh, um, profitable for you. So now we talk about the kids because you guys are bringing by a kid to talk an audience. Yeah. That's a responsibility too. See, because these kids will get from you the emotions about the language. They will feel like a second home at home. So tell me this little experience, how, how do you feel when you see, when you notice the improvement for the kids? I guess it's a good feeling for you guys too. I can, yeah, I have a good example. At least example. I wanted to say something. I can, yeah, I have a good example for okay. them. <laughs> yeah, say that. Oh, sorry. You, yeah, no, I just, I just had a good example yesterday. So, I mean, as you said, it's a lot of responsibility. Suddenly you take care of, I don't know how many kids, it depends, but it doesn't matter. You're, you're responsible. Well, you become somewhat of a third parent. It's scary at times. It's like, okay, now I have to make decisions. Um, many of us drive their kids somewhere. It's like, okay, yeah. it's if something happens. It's it's me who has to take the responsibility. So that can be scary. But on the other hand, um, so a situation I was in yesterday, my three-year-old host kid, he was sitting at the table and I was doing the dishes and suddenly I look over and he was just writing his name and he's like three years old. I was like, what are you doing? And he goes, This is my name. 
Oh my god. Oh yeah, I, like, I was I so know. proud and happy. It made me really emotional. Yeah. And um it was amazing. It's like and then you celebrate all these milestones with them and um yeah, you become a really important person in their lives and yes, that is, is that feels great and they become important in life in our life. Important part in our life. Yeah. And how about you, Algo? So um speaking of the language thing, um in my first family my host dad first told me, like, in the, even in the, in the, in the interviews at, at the beginning, are you comfortable speaking with them Spanish the whole time? And I was like, yes, of course, it's my native language. I mean, I don't have any problem. Yeah. So um, I was the most of the time with the girls thinking in Spanish, like half and a half at the beginning, because I didn't know how much they knew. Um, so I was like, maybe saying like, they have a sentence in English and they have a sentence in Spanish. Yes, they, both languages. Yes, yes. Um, so they will, they will learn like more like that or they will get used to that kind of like double language. Um, and at the end I was like, after the whole year passed, I was like all speaking in Spanish. They, they understood me like very well. Um, if one of them didn't understand me. They would say, oh, what does that mean? And I would explain, maybe I, I can say like one more time in Spanish and like slowly and then, uh -huh. okay, this means this in, in English. And it's now in Mexican, it, yeah. yeah, now in Mexican year, I'm teaching the girls some Spanish. We have all Friday, we have a little Spanish lesson. So we'll learn a little by little, but they know already some words, the numbers, some colors so yeah i'm trying to give her them like activities so they can learn more and you uh Feli, do you work in both languages too how how it works how you see the improvement by the kids how they take it from you so mine are are young <clears throat> i'm sorry uh the girl it's 11 months the boy is two years old so they're, they're small for like teach them another language but yes maybe some words and I feel like it's the improvement with the um, with the relation that we have I mean at the beginning he I mean the, the two-year-old he didn't want to do anything with me okay <laughs> and it was hard and it was hard for me like um trying to convince him that I'm your friend. I'm here to take care of you. Even if you don't want to, I'm not a bad person, I swear. <laughs> but yeah. And then now he's happy when I go for him. Well, when he woke up for his nap, he, we love going to the park. Uh, he pay attention to me. It's not like I'm invisible and I'm just there. Okay. Um, and then seeing the baby, I don't know, trying to walk. That's, crazy for me. Now I want to ask you guys how this year it will impact your career, how do you believe that will and uh, you put on a vita like one year abroad this and that. From now on your plans after your, after your au pair year. Luisa. I'm gonna start my master's degree in January um, in human resource management. And so since I'm kind of in the area, I know what a benefit this au pair year is going to be because it shows independence, it shows language okay. skills, and um, I feel like it was the best decision I could have made. Oh, this is good. You almost did that? I think it's going to be all this experience is going to be like a great uh, thing for my CV. I used to work in a daycare and I plan in like to keep working. I hope this all uh, pandemic thing pass and go back to schools and maybe like start study start studying something about English like like Feli did and now that I know more I can like uh, expand my studies and keep working and yeah be accepted yes. just more positive schools. news I see mm -hmm. you Feli your plans and um, yeah I'm planning to go home to start uh, at least to finish my career Okay. Uh, but then I feel I feel safer that I'm going to do it. It's not going to be a problem. So yeah, it's positive like being here and trying to naturalize the language. So, pessoal, vocês vão receber a tradução de tudo isso e acredito que eu pude passar com as meninas um pouquinho da ideia de como é 
prazeroso, ou como, é, como elas ganham com essa é, é, decisão de passar um ano fora. Mesmo que você já tenha mais de 18, 19 anos. Um ano fora, gente, você aprende muito. O, o seu a, a level, a, o estágio que você está de uma língua estrangeira, muda como um, da noite para o dia. Então, as meninas é uma, um exemplo vivo para vocês de que, não importa a idade, você faz uma pausa, vai viver um ano fora. A experiência que isso vai trazer para o seu currículo, para a sua vida, para você como pessoa, vai ser muito grande. Em qualquer profissão que você vá seguir depois. Porque é muito importante você ser independente, autossuficiente, você desenvolver a sua inteligência emocional. Você imagina uma pessoa jovem vivendo numa outra língua, com uma outra família, com crianças, tendo responsabilidades. Isso te prepara para uma vida depois. Num escritório, muito você vai saber lidar com problemas, você vai encontrar soluções, mesmo nas situações de estresse muito grande. Então, just back to you, girls. Uh, I admire very much the decision you guys take. I just told the Brazilian people, doesn't matter how old you are, just don't be afraid, do it. Whatever you do, it will, over that time, you had a curriculum, a vita, just based on your notes, just based on your course, on, on your uh, university time. Now you have to have a life experience. Emotional intelligence is, intelligence is very asked, it's a skill not everyone has. And you improve yours when you're living abroad, You learn how to find solutions. You learn how to deal with the stress. You learn how to manage the person to person. And then you open your mind to your learning level. Because as old as we get, this, we, we get slower. But when you are in the situation you guys are, you have inputs every day. So it's really a win relationship. The contrast, I was very happy you even didn't say almost anything was a contra, mostly pros. So I guess it's a good example for the girls, for someone that wants, even if not as a au pair, as a, um, an, a work experience, as a traveling experience. Some people just go for Australia to, to Asia as a student and working. Whatever you decide to take this time for you, that will bring a lot on your career, on your personal life, and you develop a lot of things, you get out of your comfort zone. So this is very important. We need this at the offices when we work at the offices as well. So you guys will have a little bit advantage when they, when you're competing with people there, they might be in a better university than you were, they might have worked a little bit more somehow, but then you travel, you speak more language than anyone else, They are competing with you. And I guess you will be also very more confident to show who you are and how you can deal with life situations. This is very important. I'm very, very proud of Louisa did it and proud of you girls too. I didn't when I was your Thank age. You. And believe me, I regret that. But I, I, I went to travel, I traveled a lot. I went to work in the US. I've been a lot of around. So I, I passed this to my kids. I say, hey, Go up to the work. Why? You know, and I want to thank you so much. And um, it's nice for me to work with a lot of people in different ages to see the young generation working for themselves. You guys coming from Argentina. I'm from Brazil. My daughter is German, but she has a lot of this Latin uh, um, sense of life. Like, Yes, yes. We are really, really <laughs> strong women. I always say this in Germany because sometimes they doubt this. They think all oh, Latinas, they are more at home. They are very obey ladies. I said, no obey, Jose. We are really power women and I'm very happy you guys are just proving this. And it's, it's important because it's still women, we, when we work, we get less salary. We get less um we are not really recognized sometimes and then when you have this skill and the emotional intelligence to show them does not matter where you come from does not matter where a woman it is a boy i do it i can i have these skills and this is a very important so i hope you guys enjoyed as well hope this experience will bring so much more than you expect and i'm sure it will And in, I'm sure as a private level now, you're going to bring to your kids. You're going to bring this, this freedom to be all over, this freedom to take decisions and say, hey, 
don't be afraid. Thank you so much. It was really nice to talk to you. I hope the other girls will be motivated. They will look at you guys and say, hey, that's what I want to do too. Okay, we were talking about growth contrast. The girls were already talking and why they will, what they will take to their life from this year, uh, how, what they won on this. And now they will talk freely to you, their messengers, their, just put your feelings now on your comments. Louisa. So um, I think if you look at the whole experience at one, and I mean, I'm here for two years now, so looking back, I can really say it's not always going to be easy. There's going to be hard days. There might even be hard weeks because of all sorts of reasons, because sometimes work is tough and sometimes you miss home and sometimes things happen that are just unexpected and would be hard whether you're here or not. But at the end of the day, I think the most important thing to remember is that um, th what you gain from this is so worth it. And like looking back, even starting this program like a little older than other girls who come here with 18, I still can say the independence I gained, the less lessons I learned, they're going to be valuable for the rest of my life. And there are many situations that at first it seems scary driving in the US or taking care of kids and really being responsible or navigating through life in a different country without friends at first, without family. But this is only going to make you stronger and you will realize, no, I can do this. I, I can do this. I will find my way. And um, you will go home as a different, better person eventually. And I think that's really what everyone should keep in mind when doing this. Have an open mind and be ready to communicate. Your host family can only do so much if you don't tell them how you feel and what you need and what you maybe didn't like. So as long as you keep that in mind, it's going to be a great experience. The next one to tell just for your heart. No, and I'm, I'm agree. I think that communication is key here. If you don't like something, just tell it. I mean, there's still, you're going to be living here. You're going to be sharing your, your, your house with, it's not your house, it's someone else's <laughs> house. You're just going to be here. If it's, if they're, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel so lucky with the family that I choose. And that's the thing. We choose our family. That's why if you need to take, I don't know, six months to, uh, to get to know that family, just take it. If you feel it like in two weeks, do it too. I think it's all like, it's you, between, you, ha you have you that have feeling that it's, yes. Yeah, okay. But then again, yes communication is key and a phrase that really helped me to go <laughs> to to make the decision to come here it's you should do it and if you're afraid you should do it with with uh, fear okay just, all right it's a point yeah and just i had to i had to agree with luisa when she said i mean when you come here you're gonna learn a lot like a lot about the language a lot about the other culture and you had the chance to uh, let the others learn your culture too. So that's really cool because it's not only you getting the, the other cultures, you're you, giving you also representing culture. your culture, your country as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 This is, as we have been seeing now for almost one hour, the girls just talk about positive things. Nobody complained, nobody said the bad things. And this is a good thing. It's, Oh. <laughs> you girls, you girls, so beautiful, so nice, and um, I have just thank you, thank you, and hope you guys thank you, thank you, you. even more uh, a joy and find everything you guys are looking for. Okay, that's my wish. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, and I will see you in Chicago sometime soon when Mr. Trump let us. Yay! Come. We Germans are not welcome right now. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but and then we'll be coming to California, Agus. Yes, 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 <laughs> Kelly, all the way to Kelly. <laughs> yes. So, and um, as I said, very, very grateful. I'm very, very mm -hmm. proud of you guys. Beautiful girls, wonderful girls. And uh, when I see you guys, I can remember my time, and I'm like, I wish 
sometimes I wish I would be that age again and I would go abroad again one year. All right. <laughs> so see you soon in Chicago, girls. Take care. Okay. Cool, it is there. Don't yeah, forget it. Take you. care of yourself. Protect everyone and yourself, okay? Because we don't know how things are going to be. Europe, we are living a very bad time again. We were almost, you know, over the curve and now it's... So take care, right? Okay, bye, Jill. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bom, pessoal, espero que vocês tenham gostado do vídeo. Que vocês... Acompanhe esta série, que essas experiências sirvam para te motivar. Se você trabalha no exterior, falando uma outra língua, e quer participar do Trabalhando no Exterior desta série, é só me escrever um e-mail ou um comentário aqui com o seu contato. Nós vamos conversar e você pode, de repente, estar aqui, dividindo a sua experiência com outros jovens que sonham em viver o que você está vivendo agora. Eu vou estar aqui uma vez por semana, se inscrevam no canal, deixem um like, vamos manter essa comunicação. Eu vou responder a todas as perguntas, ok? Nos vemos.